This photograph was taken 5,000 feet in the air by one of these three men. What is your name, please? My name is Ed Cruz. My name is Ed Cruz. My name is Ed Cruz. Only one of these men is the real Ed Cruz. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to tell the truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Anison. The headache remedy with a special combination of ingredients to relieve pain, fight depression, calm jittery nerves. Anison. Hi, panel. Hello. Hi, Bud. Hi, Bud. How are you? Kitty, welcome back from your two weeks vacation. I hope you had a swell time. Thank you very much. The children had a lovely time. Mama didn't? Uh, well, it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, panel. Will you kindly open up your first envelope there, take out your affidavit cards, and follow along with me on this first one. I, Ed Cruz, am a member of the U.S. Navy's Parachute Exhibition Team. This year, we will give exhibitions in 35 cities, playing to some 7 million people. As these films show, our routine starts with a group jump from 12,500 feet. With smoke grenades attached to our feet, we free fall at 120 miles per hour while we pass a baton from man to man and do various aerial maneuvers, such as back loops, after dropping 10,000 feet in 60 seconds, we open our chutes and land in front of the audience grandstand. My job keeps me particularly busy. I jump with a microphone strapped near my mouth and a camera fastened on my arm. On the way down, I broadcast a description of the jump, which is piped through a public address system on the ground. I also take pictures of my teammates as we fall through space together. We are called the Shooting Stars, signed Ed Cruz. So, panel, we have three intrepid gentlemen here, all claiming to be Ed Cruz, member of the so-called and well-named Shooting Stars. We'll start this questioning, I think, with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, Bud. That's fascinating, is it? That stick we see in his hand there, that's that baton, that number one, is that what they pass back and forth? Yes, sir. How can the audience on the ground tell that that's what they're doing, number one, from, from all those thousands of feet up there? Without binoculars, the spectators could not actually see the baton pass completed. And number two, why do they do it then? Uh, just for the, for the film? Smoke flares are attached to the jumper's legs, and there are various colors. And besides, we do a narration drawing their attention to the smoke flares. Thank you. Number three, how much does an average parachute weigh? 30 pounds. Uh, number three, how many do you wear when you work? Two, I wear a, a main chute and a reserve chute. <clears throat> number two, how do you, thank you. Peggy. Uh, thank you. Uh, number three, why do you wear that crash helmet? Do you ever land on your head? <laughs> just for, <laughs> hmm? It's just for safety's sake. Well, I mean, but you don't hit anything up in the air. No, just it's in case you should land on your head. Is that it? When landing, sometimes you do have to fall over. I see. Which arm, which arm clicks the shutter with that camera to take the pictures if you've already got a mic in your other hand? And, uh, and, you've got, and who guides the rope so that you land in front of the grandstand? I mean, would, would you repeat the question, please? <laughs> well, I mean, they seem as busy as the one arm paper hanging with the itch. But who, how do you work your camera? Trigger mechanism is right here in my hand. I see. And how do you work the microphone? It's attached right to my chest, right below my mouth. Then how do you work the shroud? The, Is that do, what they call them? We yes. do not take the pictures uh, until or after we activate the canopy. In other words, I'm not taking a picture when the canopy is coming down. I understand, but when, how do you get to <laughs> land in front of the grandstand? He'll, he'll take you up one day and you can free fall with him, Peggy, and we'll straighten this out. Oh! <laughs> Orson! Uh, number two, you are attached to, you are with the U.S. Navy. Yes, sir. Right? In other words, part of the taxes that I pay are so that you nuts can fly through the air like yours, right? That's right. What benefit uh, do I get from paying you money to, to jump out in the air? Why does the government sponsor such a thing? Which number? Yeah, number two, still. Pride in the Armed Forces of the Pride United States. Pride in the Armed States. Forces. The United States Navy, sir. 
All right, well, my money is well spent, and I was proud anyway, I want you to know, but I didn't even need that. At uh, number one, <laughs> who holds the longest free fall record? Captain Joe Kittinger. Number three, do you agree with that? It was a Russian, a free fall uh, was made by a Russian. He jumped from 76,000 feet and fell to 2,500 feet free fall. That's true. Uh, number... <laughs> Kitty. Number one, what does free fall mean? It means falling through the air before you open your parachute. Ah, now how do you time this, number two? You have a stopwatch and an altimeter on your reserve chute. Added to the camera and the shroud <laughs> and, the, and the microphone? Yes, ma'am. Where, where is the, where is the uh, stopwatch? The stopwatch is mounted on the reserve, directly in front of it. Number three, do you pack your own parachute? Yes. Number one, do you have athletic training in order to go into this kind of uh, business? Well, we do calisthenics regularly to keep in shape. And that's all the time we have. So your next exercises panel will be involved with marking oh, those ballots. So will you kindly do so at once, without change, and of course, without any consultation whatsoever. As you vote now for number one, number two, or number three. A team of challengers will receive the usual $250 for every incorrect vote indulged in by our panelists. All ballots marked? All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one. I like this. He has a nice, straightforward look about him. I, th I thought it was pretty hard to tell, frankly. I would be surprised. Number two had a lot of pride in the armed services. But I don't know, number one seemed very sure of himself when he was answering, and you'd have to be to go down on one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, voted for number three. I was trying to listen to their voices to tell, because I think they would be uh, selected partly for their public speaking ability if they have to use the mic, and he seemed to have, uh, also, he knew that the longest free fall was done by a Russian, which I, I've read is true. Kitty. I voted for number three in spite of the free fall by the Russian. I thought it was by that fellow we had on the program who was a member of Operation Stargazer. Kittinger. He went down four miles or something. But anyway, when number three talked about the canopy and the way he did the whole thing, it sounded terribly technical and very good to me. So I voted for number three. So it's kind of split even Stephen there. Two for one and two for three. All right, let's see how this pairing off works out when truth stares us in the face, which it does right now, because we're about to learn which one of these gentlemen actually is a member of the well-named shooting stars. So will the real Ed Cruz please stand up? <laughs> Pretty good job of fooling there. If you split them down the middle like that, that's really all right. And you can, well, pat yourselves on the back for a good job of acting. Number two, what is your real name, sir? What do you really do? My name is Brian Gosling, and I work for Consolidated Edison. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, number three, you got half the votes. What is your real name, sir? What do you do? My name is Morgan Oliver. I'm assistant advertising manager with Scholastic Magazines. <laughs> well, to check the score is very easy, gentlemen, because there were two incorrect votes that you trapped the panel into making. And at $250 each, that's $500. And that's not bad, considering the fact you brought us a great deal of pleasure. And we hope we gave you some, too. That comes to you, of course, from Anison, as well as a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Anison. Thank you, gentlemen. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> Meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is David Rosenblatt. My name is David Rosenblatt. My name is David Rosenblatt. Panel, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, David Rosenblatt, am president, owner, and sole employee of the Cookie of the Month Club. <laughs> For a modest fee, I send each month a box of home-baked, home-wrapped cookies to young people who are away at boarding school or college. Every month, I ship a different variety of cookies to my customers from Arizona to Mississippi. Since I started in December, my business has increased over 50%. Incidentally, I do all the baking myself. Signed, David Rosenblatt.
Our panel, we have, uh, we have enrolled each of you in the Cookie of the Month Club, and in front of you is this month's selection. You may open those boxes, Ooh. and before you question, you are free to sample your cookies, and it'll give you a little more of an idea of what the young man or men do. <laughs> well, you've heard, you heard all three of them claim to be David Rosenblatt, president of the Cookie it. of the Month Club. Let's start with uh, Peggy Cass, mm. with your mouth full. It's all right. They're absolutely delicious, they Master are. Rosenblatt. <laughs> Miss Master Rosenblatt, number two. Do you do them by hand or do you use a mix master? Well, sometimes I use I do it by hand, but usually I would use a mix master. Thank you. Number three, do you use a cookie cutter? No, uh, only once I did. Thank you. Number one, what is a Toll House cookie? That's a chocolate chip cookie. Thank you. Number um, two, what's the temperature of your oven when you make a butter cookie? Huh. Approximately 350 degrees. Thank you. <laughs> Number three, do you work on a cookie sheet? Uh, yes, usually. Thank you. Number one, uh, what is your cookie sheet made of? I think it's stainless steel. Thank you. Uh, no, I didn't hear that. Um, steel, steel cookie sheet. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm doing so Orson. loud, I can't hear the answer. <laughs> the feel is yours, Orson. I think I got an off batch here. I, this is a, no. <laughs> oh, I, but good. I, I'm not just complaining. I don't want to kill yourself. Yeah, <laughs> number uh, three, uh, how did you, uh, you, know, you were never in a Girl Scouts or anything. How did you learn how to cook cookies? Well, uh, I had no other way of getting uh, any sweet feet because my mother isn't the best cook in the world. No? <laughs> it's okay, you can knock him after that order. Number one, uh, how did you come to bake cookies? I mean, that's a thing that your sister might have learned, but how come you did it? Well, my cousin was always um, asking my mother to bring something to college to eat, so we figured we may as well get paid for doing this and sending it to other people. Kitty. David Rosenblatt, whoever you are, these are marvelous cookies. And I'm delighted I'm enrolled in the club. I'll send some to my son, who's also away at boarding school. Uh, number three, does your mother let you use her oven, or do you have your own? I use uh, her oven. Number one, how long does it take you to bake all these cookies? Well, it depends on the cookie. How are you doing in school? I'm doing fine. <laughs> number two, how long does it take you to do all your cookies? Well, it's same as number one said, it depends on what kind of cookie. Well, I mean, to do the whole thing, your mm. whole business. These, for instance. Oh, I'd say approximately uh, two hours, maybe. Two hours. Number three, how much does it cost to send these cookies? Uh, it depends on how far I have to send it. Tom Potter. Ah. Tom? It's a lot of depending here. Uh, number one, number one, what does unleavened mean? That means that there's no leaven in it, or yeast. Thank you. Number two, what does that yeast do when you put it in there? Well, it makes the cookie uh, more or less taller, you might say. <laughs> more or less taller. Uh, having learned the real origin of Tall House Cookies, that's it. We have to stop now and take time, if you will, please, from your eating and mark your ballot. Well, mark them right it. now without change and, of course, no consultation. As you vote now for number one, number two, or number three. Everybody voted? All ballots marked. Tom, for whom? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just voted for number one. I guess uh, not because I thought he made cookies better than the other fellows, but I, I thought he answered more quickly. But that really doesn't always mean anything, does it? I don't know. Peggy, what well, is your choice? My dear, my heart is with number two. I had to vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> he's a short cookie, but he's a cute cookie. <laughs> Orson. Well, I voted for number three. Maybe it's just wishful thinking, but I took a look at them as they were coming down, and number three had the cleanest hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one, 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 two, one, three. Kitty, with whom are you going to cast your lot? I voted for number three because I think he's got to be the real one. He wouldn't have said his mother wasn't a very good cook unless he was obliged to tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> unless he had his own source of income. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we have it. One for one, one for two, two for three. And let's go with that now as we find out which one of these young gentlemen is enterprising enough to start his own business and become president of the Cookie of the Month Club, to say nothing of chef. So will the real David Rosenblatt please stand up?
good man. Just for the fun of it, David, uh, how much do you figure you've made since you started this whole idea? Well, I, I make about 100%, so uh, I, can't, I can't tell. It's I can't. all profit, huh? Yes, I get a different amount of orders. Well, what do you figure up to date you've made? Right now, about, about $30. You, uh, you've $30 made $30 to $30 today? $30 to $40. Well, good man. That's all right. That's good spending money. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Robert Reznikoff, and I'm a sixth grade student at Thomas Edison School in Fairlawn, New Jersey. Good boy. And number two, what is your real name, and where are you in school? My name is Bill Michelson, and I am a fourth grade student in public school, 196 in Queens. Atta boy. <laughs> well, fellas, since last December, David has made 30 or 40 dollars, but here in a matter of minutes, you have clobbered the panel for a, an amount of two incorrect votes. Total, of course, $500. You buy a few cookies eaten for that, I'll tell you. That comes to you from Anderson, as does a gift package waiting for you, the fine products from the makers of Anderson. Thank you, fellas, for being with us. Hope you had fun. Good night. God bless you. Now, panel, may I present our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Willis Conover. My name is Willis Conover. My name is Willis Conover. Would you follow along once again with your copies of this affidavit panel? I, Willis Conover, am a familiar name and a familiar voice to radio listeners around the world from Sweden to Ceylon. For an hour and a half a day, six days a week, 52 weeks a year, I broadcast a radio program which can be heard in every country in the world. My audience is the largest of any international broadcast and has been estimated at some 30 million people. The program is called Music USA and appeals mainly to the universal appetite for good jazz. Most of the music I play comes from my own personal collection of some 60,000 records. People in this country can hear the show only if they have a shortwave radio, since the program is beamed overseas by the U.S. Information Agency's famous Voice of America. Signed, Willis Conover. <laughs> These three gentlemen all claim to be Willis Conover, broadcaster for the Voice of America, with a tremendous audience. We'll start with Orson Bean. Orson? Uh, Mr. Conover, number one, you have 60,000 records in your collection. Uh, what kind of music, uh, and they're jazz mostly, is that right? That's correct. What kind of music uh, do Lambert, Hendrix, and Ross sing? They sing... What do they specialize in, I mean? They write words to uh, existing jazz music. Do you know who's particularly? Oh, various people. Uh, number three, uh, 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 what vocalist made her start with Stan Kenton? Uh, June Christie. Uh, number two, uh, do, does the name King Pleasure mean anything to you? Yes. What? He was one of the first to do what uh, Lambert, Hendricks, and Ross were describing. And, and who do Lambert, Hendricks, and Ross mainly write lyrics to? Do you know? Frequently to Count Basie's music. Uh, number three. Kitty. All right. Number three, where do you broadcast from? I broadcast from Washington, D.C. Number two, who's the head of the United States Information Agency? Edward R. Murrow. Number one, where is this program jammed? Uh, this program is very seldom, James. Number three, what do you consider uh, the most popular of all your uh, records? I would say Oscar Peterson, number one. Uh, number two, uh, Frank Sinatra, providing he's singing with a jazz group. Number two, do you uh, know where this program would be the most jammed? Probably uh, when it's being aimed to countries behind the Iron Curtain. Number one, do you know how these programs are jammed? by sending out uh, other broadcasts. Number, thank you. Number two, who provides the money for the United States Information Agency? Under what aegis is it? It's appropriated by Congress. Number three, who... Tom. Uh, thank you. Uh, number three, what is Dixieland music called in England? Do you know? Mm, the same thing, Dixieland music. Uh, thank you. Number one, there's a very famous Swedish jazz musician, certainly the most famous that we know of from Sweden. What's his name? Do you know? Uh, K. Winding. Number two, what instrument does he play? Do you happen to know that? Trombone. Uh, number two, uh, what is the name jazz? What does that come from? Do you remember? Where does jazz originate? What does the name jazz mean? No one knows for sure. Some say it's uh, from the French word jazzé to speed up. Number, th number three is that? Are you going to agree with that? 
Yes, I agree with that. What is it known as in France, for instance, number three? I don't believe I have the original question, please. Jazz. jazz. What is jazz. jazz called in French? Uh, jazz is called the same thing in France. Thank you. Peggy. Thank you. Good Number time. three, what uh, big band did Jimmy Rushing sing with? Uh, Jimmy Rushing was with the Jimmy Lunsford band. Thank you. Uh, number two, what musician is called The Bird? Charlie Parker. Thank you. Uh, number one, where is the main sending station for Voice of America in Europe? Their main transmitter. Well, they have several over there. Thank you. Number one, what in, number two, what instrument does Zuddy Singleton play? Zuddy Singleton? Yes. Drums. Thank you. Number, uh, ooh, oh, uh, number three, who's Nat Hentoff? And Nat Ken Hentoff. Nat Hentoff. I think of him as a jazz drummer. Thank you. Number two, who's Leonard Feather? That's all the time we have. So feather your feathers, but mark your ballots, if you will, please, right now. Without change and no consultation permitted, as usual, Voting as you do now for number one, number two, or number three. We all set? Everybody marked? Yeah. Tom, for whom? Well, even, even if it is a number two, it should be because uh, he gave some sensational answers. Of course, Hentoff is a jazz critic, and uh, I thought that number one did pretty good, except that every time it came to number two to uh, qualify what number one had said, he always did it beautifully. So I voted for number two. Peggy. Well, me too. I mean, number two seemed it to be because, uh, um, well, Jimmy Rushing, I thought, started with, uh, uh, um, you know, Count Basie. And everything else that I knew, he knew. And not that I know much. <laughs> Orson. They were all extraordinary. I mean, they, they all knew everything except uh, Mac Hentoff, I think, was a slip. But number two's voice is such that I, I would defect from Russia if I heard it. So. <laughs> uh, Kitty, you going along with it? I'm going along with Orson. I agree that number two has a marvelously seductive voice. <laughs> and I think it's number two because he seemed to know almost everything. I didn't know anything, but he answered with such assurance, so I voted for number two. Well, there it is. It's unanimous. For number two, let's see whether they stand or fall by this one as we find out on our own moment of truth which one of these gentlemen actually is the broadcaster for the Voice of America. So will the real Willis Conover please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Now let's find out about your two sidekicks. Number one, what is your real name, sir, and what do you really do? My name is Robert Stone. I'm the art director for Scandinavian Airlines. <laughs> Number three, your name, sir. What do you do? My name is Will Groff. I have my own banquet and catering agency in York, Pennsylvania. <laughs> well, in checking the score, gentlemen, we find, as I'm sure you know, that the panel was very smart this time. They really zeroed in on the right one 100%. In that case, of course, from Anderson comes your way. $150, but we hope that the difference to that and what it might have been is more than made up for by the good time you had. We enjoyed your visit, and also on your way out, you'll receive a gift package of the fine products from the makers of Anderson. Thanks very much for being with us. Goodbye, and God bless you. Uh, Peggy, I just got word from the, the Naval Department that they are making arrangements to have you flown out to the, one of the fields and taken up for one of those free falls. Ah. <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't have to do Orson, it. I didn't sign anything. Orson, they're going to take you up too, Orson, with no parachute. <laughs> if it's free, I'll take it. <laughs> well, happy halyards to you all. And thank you for being your own wonderful selves, which is the best anybody could say about anybody. Good night. Good night, Good night. See you all again next week at the same time, and I'll see you, of course, tomorrow afternoon on our daytime show. And in the meantime, may I remind you once again, as I say good night for Anderson, to tell the truth. Bye. <laughs> To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. been brought to you tonight by Brist Stand Nasal Mist, the decongestion nasal spray for relief in seconds from sinus congestion and head cold distress. Brist Stand Nasal Mist. Johnny Olsen speaking for To Tell the Truth, this program was pre-recorded. <laughs>